first of all, can you actually zoom out even more? Like, because you mentioned ion propulsion yeah. engine is a subset of, of electric. electric. Mm -hmm. So like maybe, is there a categories of electric engines and then we can zoom in on ion propulsion? Yes. So sure. There's um, the two most, kind of conventional types that have been around since the 60s are ion engines and hall thrusters. And ion engines are a little bit simpler because they don't use a magnetic field for generating thrust. Um, and then there are also um, some other types of plasma engines, but that don't fit into those two categories. So just kind of other plasma, like um, a Vasimir engine, which we could get into. Um, and then... Those are probably the main three categories that would be fun to talk about. Oh, and then, of course, the category um, of engine that I work on, which is um, has a lot of similarities to an ion engine, but could be considered its own class called a colloid thruster. Colloid. Cool. Okay. So what is an ion propulsion ion uh, engine? Okay. So in an ion engine, you have an ionization chamber and you inject the propellant into that chamber. And this is usually... Um, a neutral gas like xenon or argon. Uh, so you inject that into the chamber and you also inject um, a, a stream of really hot, high energy electrons. And everything's just moving around um, very randomly in there. And the, the whole goal is to have um, one of those electrons collide with one of those neutral atoms and turn it into an ion. So kick off a secondary electron and now you have plasma. Uh, yes. Okay. And now you have, <laughs> okay. um, uh, and now you have a charged, you know, xenon or argon ion, and and more electrons and so on. Um, and then uh, some fraction of those ions will happen to make it to this downstream um, electric field that we set up between two grids with holes in them. Mm -hmm. And you know, in terms of area, the same amount of those ions also makes runs into the walls and lose their charge. And um, that's where some of the inefficiencies come in. But the very lucky few make it to those holes in, in that grid. And there are um, two grids, actually, and you apply a, a voltage differential between them, and, and that sets up an electric field. And a charged particle in an electric field uh, creates a force. Uh, and so those ions are accelerated out the back of the engine and the reaction force is um, is what pushes the spacecraft forward. Um, if you're you know following along and tallying these charges, now we've just sent a positive beam of ions out the back of the spacecraft. Um, and and for our purposes here, the spacecraft is neutral. So eventually, um, those ions will come back and hit the spacecraft because it's a positive beam. So you also have to have an external cathode um, producer of electrons outside the engine that pumps electrons into that beam and neutralizes that. So now it's net neutral everywhere and it won't come back to the spacecraft. So that's that's an ion engine. What temperature are we talking about here? So in terms of like the, the chemical base engines, those are super hot. Uh, you mentioned plasma here. How hot does this thing get? Um, I mean, is that an interesting thing to talk about in a sense that, is that an interesting yeah. distinction or is heat, I mean, it's all gonna be hot? No, so it, it's important, uh, especially for some of these smaller satellites people are into launching these days. So the, it, it's important because you have the plasma, but also those high energy electrons are hot. And um, if you have a lot of those that are going into the walls, you do have to care about the temperature. So um, I, I'm having trouble remembering off the top of my head. I think they're at like 100 electron volts in terms of the electron energy. And then I'd have to remember how to convert that into Kelvin. Can you stick your hand in it? Not, not no, temperature. not recommended. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 